Stranger engagements, allergy sufferers beware, Mike Tyson chills, George Martin hibernates, and it's a John Wick universe, we're just living in it. All coming to you in This Week Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm DT Critic, and welcome to another edition of This Week Down the Rabbit Hole, Volume 21. It's another week of exciting mayhem and murder. Wait, sorry, wrong script. It's another week of the crazy things coming down the Google trending wire this week and landing on the front page of the news program only an ogre would love. So pull up your chair, your donkey, and your corny joke detectors, and let's get to it, shall we? Story number one, Stranger Engagements. After last week's delving into untrue love, this week we felt it was time to focus on the other kind of love. Strange. Yes, we have a pair of lovebirds who take the cake when it comes to strange, as Millie Bobby Brown of Stranger Things is showing off an engagement ring at the ripe old age of 19. If this were a hundred years ago, I'm not sure anyone would be looking askance. But the fact that she is 19 and tying the knot now before... Who the hell knows what before is a little strange to say the least. Evidently, they met three years ago on Instagram, no less. And while I've been told a million times that social media apps are not dating apps, we have another case of I beg to differ. She is engaged to the son of rocker John Bon Jovi, which makes this a religious marriage, as they must be living on a prayer, or something like that. The pair evidently has been going strong, and so decided to make it official, as Millie Bobby Brown quoted, I love you three summers now, honey, I want them all. Of course, quoting the Taylor Swift song might have some unclear as of yet consequences, if their marriage is anything like Miss Swift's love life, Miss Brown may want some drama. Me. Story number two. Get ready, allergy sufferers, for a bedridden spring. Or yay, California wildflowers. Take your pick. Don't get me wrong. When it comes to flowers, I love them all, except maybe dandelions, which create all kinds of havoc in a lawn. I love the beauty and majesty of the flower, even a wild one, and this year they are sprayed all across of the California hills, as the deluge we had in the winter and spring set the stage for what they are calling a super bloom. Hooray! Or, we have a dark and brooding spring to look forward to, as allergy sufferers will have double doses of allergy medicine just to make it through a day. As with a super bloom of flowers, we will be getting the brand new and improved pollens, which will be striking us in ways they haven't in decades. And I'm right here to rain on the parade of people cheering the California drought as over, because that's just the guy I am. But don't fear, allergy sufferers. I'm sure next year the media will be cheering on the return of the drought and telling you how you can only water your lawns minus one day a week. Because, you know, they don't fix anything about our water infrastructure and never intend to. So we all have something to look forward to. But hooray, flowers and super blooms. Story number three. The world is now zen as Mike Tyson chills out. One of my first stories for Down the Rabbit Hole was to cover the notorious YouTuber Jake Paul and his desire to go mainstream with his boxing. While he seemed to have made an impression in his last bout, despite a loss, his latest gambit seems to be right up his and his sensationalist brother's alley, as he has decided to challenge Mike Tyson to a boxing match. If you are looking for something substantial to burnish your reputation, going after the guy who bit someone's ear off at a boxing match might be low on the totem pole. But if all you want is notoriety, well, there you go. The Paul brothers' stripes haven't changed. As for Mike Tyson's stripes, they seem to be of a different color these days. They are blue and ice cold. As the notorious boxer and former heavyweight champion responded to the challenge, 
no way, I'm not fighting nobody, I'm just chilling, which is something we should all be doing these days. Maybe he has taken up dudism like he should have a long time ago. Whether he has and has started to drink right Russians or not, we may never know. But I'm grateful to say that Mike Tyson abides, and I take great pleasure in knowing that. Story number four. Famous fantasy author goes into novel hibernation. This is one of those stories I'm just not sure whether to yell hooray or boo about, which makes it perfect for down the rabbit hole, as George R. R. Martin seems to have gone into novel hibernation again. Once again, we are having a setback to when his next novel in the Game of Thrones universe is about to come out, as Martin is already seemingly adapting another Game of Thrones prequel series for the television screen. Maybe it's fear that he won't be able to fix what the writers wrecked at the end of Game of Thrones, or maybe he loved the ending of the TV series and figured he couldn't improve upon it, thus setting him up for failure. While we here at Down the Rabbit Hole definitely believe he could fix something with what happened to Daenerys, we are conflicted about his side project. After all, those of us who were fans of the fantasy world he created and envisioned definitely could use some more of that world to come out on the screen. Whether it be Game of Thrones or House of Dragons, people are clamoring for more of the world of mystics, magic, and of course, dragons. With a possible Jon Snow sequel and the Hedge Knight with Sir Duncan and Egg, we are excited about the future possibilities. So maybe we let slide this a little longer about writing. But he better finish before he's dead, because having a ghostwriter take up his work, just not cool, man. Maybe Martin should hang out with Tyson and become more chill. That could work. Story number five. The created world we never knew we needed, and maybe still don't. I remember sitting and watching the first John Wick movie at the movie theater way back in 2014. The plot was a bit contrived, sure, and Keanu Reeves' acting is, well, Keanu Reeves-like. The movie was a kind of fun piece of fluff about an ex-contract killer who left the business for a beautiful wife who had just recently passed. She had given him a beagle to help him get over things. Some Russian gangsters killed the dog to help encourage John to sell his car. Violence and hilarity ensue as Wick goes after these gangsters all for the love of a dog he barely knew. Vengeance for Puppy should have been the title. Now they have made another three movies over the last nine years to add pathos to the character. But guess what, Wick lovers? They're going to come out with a new spin-off series called The Continental from the World of John Wick which means we are now creating a whole world surrounding the character of John Wick. Exciting, right? But wait, there's more. We are going back into the 70s in New York's hellscape to deal with the character of Winston Scott, played by Ian McShane in the John Wick movies. Enthralled yet? Okay, maybe I tease. I do love me some Ian McShane. After all, Deadwood is one of my favorites. But creating a whole world and mythos around John Wick, I have to ask the question, why? Has Hollywood run out of good and original series to run? I guess, maybe I shouldn't really ask that, but whether we want it or not, this John Wick spin-off TV series will be coming shortly to a screen near you. Oh goody. Well, that's all she wrote. Another issue of Down the Rabbit Hole flushed down the drain and coming straight to a social media post near you, which sounds about right for all social media posts. Leave your notes, snide remarks, and thoughts in the comments, and we will set them on fire to roast with marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers. You will be the s'mores of our lives. This is DT Critic signing off, saying, please don't quote Taylor Swift lyrics, it just won't end well.